Buenos días, John, and thank you for joining us today at Business Spotlight Series. Thank you. Today we have John McGuire, founder and MD of Paltron Technology Limited. They partner with organizations to deliver innovative digital services and solutions to increase efficiency and reduce costs utilizing artificial intelligence. They are also Amazon and Microsoft Gold Partner. So John, very impressive. Can you tell us a little bit more what you do and for how long you've been doing it? So we, we have been doing, well, personally, I've been in computer science say, for maybe about 40, 40 years say, since, since graduating. Uh, we, we deliver digital transformation solutions uh, to clients. Traditionally, we, we have done that around software development, things like web, things like mobile, and uh, more recently, using artificial intelligence as, as the demand for artificial intelligence services has increased. Uh, so we've been doing this for, for, for quite some time. The company's been going for about 28 years. We've been delivering artificial intelligence solutions for at least the last maybe eight, 10 years uh, as well. So we we have quite a bit of experience in, in this sort of area. Great. So before we were discussing a bit earlier about uh, AI and the opportunities and threats it poses. What from your side of, uh, of the fence? What, what what are your comments? What what can you tell people watching this recording? So so, so I've been around in, in computer science to see the birth of the. You know, basically, I, I did a degree that involved computer science microprocessing. So the microprocessor was really just beginning to change the world at that time. I've seen the wave of the personal computer, you know, the first personal computer beginning to begin to take over things. I've seen the waves of the web uh, beginning to, to change change things, mobile change things as well. But I don't think there's actually a bigger change, societal change that will come from, uh, from any of those waves compared to AI. I think AI will probably be the biggest because it can do the most and it and it is it can do so many things uh you know so so i think i mean there are limitations it's definitely limitations you know people have talked about dangers of of ai you know uh, general artificial intelligence etc you know kind of sci-fi stuff but you will see it change a lot within business and an awful lot will change so what industries should be watching out for ai you mentioned before you know, retail and some retailers that are online business, oh, no, we, 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 we don't need that. And they've gone out of business, right? So yeah. industries should be, you know, watching AI and see how they can pivot their business rather than be replaced. Yeah. So, so you saw you saw the web, uh, for example, Let, let's, let's look back in history so we can then predict going forward. So you look at the web and you look at certain companies saying, as we were talking about before this interview, really, uh, we were talking about some people ignored the web. Some people said, "Well, we we we've we've ran for a hundred years in a, with a with a store in a high street. Why would we bother with this new technology? We don't really believe." You know, when Amazon came out, people were saying, "Who would ever buy a book and get it delivered to them? Why would you? Why would you bother? Why would you bother doing that?" And look at the the success of Amazon. And actually, if you look at the web, I can't think of any business. That that hasn't uh, that hasn't embraced the web to some extent. Any area of business, so I, I think almost any business in AI can you know uh, can can embrace AI. I mean, you're, you're you're even seeing. I mean, I read a story of the the French government using AI to raise more tax, and what they did was they looked at satellite photographs of the French countryside, and they looked for swimming pools, and apparently. Uh, some people in France don't like declaring that they have a swimming pool because there's a tax based on it. So they use the AI to, to, to find all the swimming pools, geolocate the swimming pools, and then send out tax demands to the to those folks. So that's a that's an incredibly obscure use of, yes. of artificial intelligence. But it's something that could not be done before. You know, you, you may be able to have a team of people looking at satellite photos and identifying, but it would be so time consuming and perhaps not economically viable. Now the French government can probably do that within, you know, within a day, probably within a few hours yeah, yeah. After, after training AI. So if you if it can be used for those sort of things, it can be used in, you know, 
it's, it's, it's already been used in things like retail. It's already been used. Uh, you're beginning to see generative AI being used in things like law, you know, actually creating documents, reading documents. We do, we do a bit of work within, within that sector. You see computer vision uh, machines trying to understand. You look at self-driving cars where they're trying to understand scenes. Is there a car close by? What speed are we doing? Uh, is there a traffic uh, like there? I honestly cannot think of an industry that it won't that won't be used. Yeah, uh, you know, I've, I've seen. I have a son who's doing dentistry. Uh, I've I've seen videos online of of robots performing uh, fillings, etc. You know, so so even those medicine is a huge use of. Yeah. of AI that I've I've been to conferences where they, they basically said AI will cure cancer. And I, and I honestly believe that because data, the, the size of data, uh, will patterns will be discovered that we haven't seen before. Uh, so everything, everything goes. Yeah, amazing. So that's a, that's a big, big area that people should be tapping on and uh, and turning it into it into an opportunity rather than a, than a threat. Definitely. Yeah. Tell, tell me, John, what's um, through COVID? What's I mean, you've been in business before, during, and after COVID? What how did uh, what changes do you have to make in your business um, because of COVID? Yeah, so obviously, like all businesses, COVID was was like uh, somewhat of a shock, you know. So, so we were all we we're pretty much office based. Uh, you know, people would be out working, and sometimes you would you would work remote, but but mostly we were office based. We overnight, like most businesses, were transferred to to completely online. Uh, we've not really come back. We we're now a bit more hybrid. But we've not we've not really come back from that. We learned how to work offline, and we've we've managed to do that pretty pretty successfully. We are lucky in that everything we're doing is digital, so you know people can code from from home. They can analyze data from home. Uh, they can deliver solutions from home. And indeed, you know what we're doing just now. I don't know that what we're doing now before COVID might be might involve us actually not being online, but actually meeting in in person. And I, and I think it's it's certainly changed. It's, there's some negative aspects of of perhaps uh, trying to keep a team together and and meeting people personally. But it's also been positive aspects in that I can meet with somebody from Glasgow at eleven o'clock. I can meet with somebody in London at twelve o'clock, and so on. So it's, so in some ways, COVID had the the, the strange effect of of making some things more efficient and perhaps maybe other things less efficient but we've just adapted because there's nothing you can do but adapt and it certainly changed employment patterns post-covid yes so in this adaptation have you come across any any tools that um or software that you know um businesses out there can use that you you found useful for yourself so a, a lot of the software that we use and a lot of the software that we deliver is all cloud-based so we're, we're, we we provide cloud-based systems so everything we use can be accessed securely from from anywhere so from our hr systems you know it's a software as a service we use the breed hr things like zero our accounting system are on are online we use microsoft teams for 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 meetings we have our own internal systems you know for for managing projects etc we use a a, a ticketing systems for for support that customers can access and, and and we can access as well so just about everything is online there's advice after covid is is get rid of on premise yeah uh, solutions and and i think most companies uh, if they haven't are are looking at yeah. it that's that's a, it's a very dinosaur uh, thing to do is to have a server sitting in you know the corner of your of your small office Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I think uh, the, the, large, the larger companies were a bit reticent to embrace cloud and uh, they wanted on-prem because of security reasons. But hey, you know, I think now mo most people have embraced uh, cloud. Yeah, that, that that battle has certainly been won. Uh, yeah. Yeah. People people understand. Uh, it's a bit like electricity. You know, the, a lot of the cloud solutions we, we deliver are based around something called serverless and it's yeah. kind of like... You, you pay for what you use. And yeah. That's the, the the good thing about that is that you I call it the Ticketmaster scenario based on Ticketmaster who sell tickets. You you can have very, very small usage and then 
you have an event, you know, like a, if you look at Ticketmaster, you know, Beyonce says she's going to play a, a huge tour in the UK and suddenly demand when those tickets come out. The, the, the servers glow red hot. With cloud systems, you don't have any problem with that anymore. It just scales up and down as required. So yes. a lot of people have now embraced that. But it's surprising, uh, you know, we're, we're sitting in Scotland and I went to something, I think it was last year, an event, and we're still very low in terms of uh, the actual adaptation of, of cloud and adoption within within business. We we have something, I think in Scotland, that maybe, you know, it's 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 like, 20 odd percent that sort of thing which is which is kind of ridiculous really given that it's now 2023 and cloud systems have been around for quite a while yeah no, definitely yeah yeah so uh john what what are your aspirations for the business uh, for the next five years in the next five years so we we're hoping to to grow i think i think we'd be hoping to at least at least double uh, within within those uh, that sort of time uh, doing a lot more work in ai we also have products that we we spun off a sister company a called Fieldant. A, we have a we have a product base around AI to solve a, one of the big problems in software development, which is is called requirements capture. A, really, anytime you 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 develop a a digital solution, you have to get the requirements. Requirements cause the most trouble in software. The uh, and digital transformation, you you generally don't get problems. With technology, you can get them, but they're you know they can generally be overcome. There's a lot of clever people, uh, but the big problems generally between the people who are commissioning a system and the people who are implementing the system and and getting them on the same page and get getting that that agreement and and cast in stone. Uh, and we we have recently just developed a or, or spun out from our own business a, a kind of our own digital transformation to make that process better internally. Uh, we spun that out as a product. So I would be hoping that we can actually uh, grow that fairly substantially uh, over. So, so we're, we're kind of, we have an IT services company, a digital transformation company, uh, which is a service company and uh, and also a product company there as well. So it's, t it's two different two different beasts really. Uh, they're very different, but uh, we'd, we'd certainly hope to see that product company grow substantially. Uh, probably more than way, way more than double. Uh, wow, very impressive. Um, your your uh, your niche market is the the SME. Is that your main? Yeah, we 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 do work within the public sector. We do work within SMEs. We do work for some larger companies. It's generally generally mid market companies are probably our our niche. But we we do a lot of work for for SMEs. Uh, as well, and we, and we have, we've really made a difference to some SMEs. I think a lot of SMEs looking to to implement digital solutions actually look at the cost of it, and and they think it's a it's a cost, but they don't realise actually that the over you know you implement some sort of custom solution, it makes your business more productive. So over like three or five years, we we've seen people. What we generally see is people do that digital transformation, and they say, wow, that's really made things a lot slicker within our company and and then they've they've gone on to do even more digital transformation yeah, because because people are costly and it's really difficult sometimes to get people so productivity uh, certainly after post covid has got to be a huge thing that everybody looks at yes i'm 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 a great advocate of of systemizing automation um, in fact, uh, in systems is the acronym for saving yourself time, energy, money, and stress. Absolutely. That's the acronym of, and I love it. So uh, we get all our clients to systemize, automate, uh, definitely. Yeah. Um, so what, in terms of employment, many, many uh, businesses out there are finding very difficult recruiting. Mm -hmm. retaining talent uh, and also recruiting talent. What um, Have you found the same in, in, in your industry? So within our industry, we, we probably some of the, have some of the most difficult problems, you know, finding, finding software, software engineers, AI experts is, is quite difficult. I tend to think though that some of the processes we have going back to that requirements tool that we have 
the average project in digital transformation overruns by 30%. Overruns. So if you if you actually think about a 30% overrun on a project, that means one in four people within our industry, within within those projects, is working on something that was never planned. I sometimes feel when you talk about systemization and, and process, I sometimes feel that we we live in a world of, of maybe agile and lean, uh, which is fine. It's it's great. It's you know I, I, we we embrace agile and lean, but sometimes we don't think enough upfront about what we're actually doing. I think in general, a great believer of really thinking about what you're doing. Different people will say you can't do this in software or digital transformation because you don't really know where you're going to get to. And saying that's fine, but if you can't imagine at least part of the journey and define that, then should you really be making that journey in the first place? So, so my view about skill shortages, et cetera, is that we have to automate our way out of those skill shortages. You know, that people are talking about the effects of AI on unemployment, et cetera. But we're living in a world where you can't get people to do to do some some yeah. jobs. You know, we, we have a we have skill shortages across lots of lots of areas. And I, and I really do think automation is the way around that. The one of the reasons we developed the the requirements tool, we developed it internally, is because we struggled to get really good people to do requirements. So we we built an AI system that would that would effectively talk people through the requirements. It, it's perhaps not as good as the most experienced person in the world at doing requirements, but you can't get people who are who are that experienced. So you so you have to get to a level. Uh, so so we we use it and we've used that to we've used that to take a requirement process which can sometimes take weeks to to cut that down to potentially potentially days and we can produce things like in software requirements you generally produce some sort of documentation and you'd also perhaps produce screenshots for people to show them what the system's going to look like we can do those using the the AI tool we have we can do those really pretty much automatically with a few prompts from from the user so uh, that saved us a, a ton of time so I, so I think it's all I think it's all about productivity it's all about productivity and improving efficiency and automating that's a brilliant insight for for many people watching this you know if you can't find the people then systemize automate yeah. and increase the productivity yeah brilliant um that's that's great um so uh, what um what would you say to what 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 advice would you give to your 18 year old self wow yeah what what was <laughs> yeah that's a that's a difficult one i think at, at 18 my my background was really I, I kind of came from a pretty kind of poor working class background i spent a lot of time at school uh, i found a real passion for science and and maths uh, but i was i was a that in, in terms of I was really engrossed uh, within that. I'd say, I'd say as an 18-year-old, I would probably say uh, don't sweat the small stuff. You know, I think you can be very, uh, very worried as a as a as a kid about how you're going to make your way in the in the world. And, and it's the same as people starting up businesses. You, you, there's a lot of doubt, you know. There maybe are, there should be doubt. It's kind of like I, 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 I played quite seriously in a band. Uh, at one point before I set up the business, uh, almost semi-professional, and the people used to say if you're if you're not nervous going onto the stage, you shouldn't be going onto the stage. Yeah. And I think, that, I think it's a bit like business. If you don't have doubts, perhaps you're just too reckless. Uh, you know, going going forward. So I think as an eighteen year old, you you've always got doubts. I was I was uh, certainly wanting to go to university. Really, really keen on. Uh, because I came from the sort of background that I came from, I was obviously keen on on making money because I saw people who had things that that I didn't have as a kid, you know, and and also I've got kids myself and I want to give them perhaps a, a, a more affluent childhood than than I had. But I think for I think as an 18 year old, you I was pretty driven. I was pretty excited by computing at the time, pretty excited about microprocessors, etc. And that just that just continued. So uh, I would have said to to myself as an eighteen year old, you know, just follow follow your follow your interests, and I, and I, I really think I've got the best job in the world. I realise lots of people say that, but I, I really do enjoy 
what I do. I would I get up and do it with no problem. I don't really have to drag myself. And I think anybody who works at the company knows that I have an avid interest in technology. And that's not really changed from when I was at school and I was interested in science and chemistry and physics and maths right up to now. I'm really interested, you know, the thing about artificial intelligence that I'm really interested in, a lot of the maths in it is really, it's quite complicated, but it's really quite, it's really quite interesting and it, and it, and it allows you to do things. You know, it's like, wow, you've done that. It's, it's really just, it's, it's mathematics and statistics. One of my friends worked for Apple, a, a quite a senior role in Apple in, in a California. And she says, it's just stats. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it is. But we are, she was on the same course as me. She comes very much from the the similar type background of of maths and, and statistics, et cetera. It's just really interesting. We're just, we're just geeks. I think that's the thing, but it is, it is the era of the geeks. Yeah. Yeah, love it, love it. So follow your interest. Uh, somebody very renowned said, "My greatest fear is not to live my life." Yeah, yeah. Like, wow, you know. But I think the I think the other thing about it. I mean, I, I certainly I, I don't think I really suffer from this, but you can be very laser focused about life. I, I think it, it reminds me of Star. If you ever look at the old sixties Star Trek and the medical bay. There's a lot of measurements. There's kind of, they've got very basic graphs shown. And it reminds me of life in that you, you have different you have different levels that you want to reach within different aspects of your life. It's no good to just go and spend 16 hours a day working because what, what are you working for? You know, you might have an interest to, to achieve something, but too many people miss their kids growing up. They, they miss, you know, the, the breakup relationships because of, I think having balance is really important. And, and, Balance actually goes out. I always reminded there's a there's a film of the Dam Busters, uh, which is an old film. I remember seeing it as a as a kid, and there there's a bouncing bomb on a you know it's a story a story of a of basically an attack on a German bot a German uh, dam during World War Two, and they're trying to work out how they can fly at a low level, a uh, you know uh, consistently across a across a, a lake basically, a. Uh, but the actual one of the big in the movie, certainly the story that was told, is one of the big breakthroughs about solving that problem was actually in the theatre when one of them was watching spotlights uh, on a stage on an on an actor. Going to the theatre solved a technical problem for them, uh, which was which you're saying. So if they hadn't gone to the theatre, they wouldn't have solved that. So I think you need a mix of things. I think you need a, an injection of something new. In order to give you inspiration for something, something old, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, brilliant analogy. Th thanks for sharing that. And uh, well, John, it's been a, a real pleasure to have you join us today at uh, um, Business Spotlight series and for sharing your experience and wisdom with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.